Oh god, the wind is like blowing us around here. Look at this. Oh, shooting stars. Oh my god. Oh, and then, oh. Whoa, what's happening? Ah! Welcome back to another episode of Saturday Afternoon Gaming. I'm your host, Gaming J, and today we're hopping into the rather artistic rather trippy experience of Proteus. Here we go. P-R-O-T-E-U-S. It's Proteus by Ed Key and David Kanaga. This is a game where you basically get to explore a procedurally generated island shown here in the background. We can see like the sun rising or something like that. That's pretty cool. This game has some nice music in it and some exploration, and that's pretty much it. It was originally envisioned as an open-ended RPG, like Elder Scrolls or something like that. But you know how, like, during the development phase, developers sometimes take out key features like, oh, I don't know, NPCs, inventory, skill trees, class types, um, any ability to interact with the environment, and so on. So I guess all those features didn't make it into Proteus. And what we ended up with was this. Proteus is kind of like taking a walk through nature, if nature was pixel arty, which is actually, that actually sounds awesome to me. So I have seen this game, quote unquote, played before, uh, but I've never played it myself. I'm saying, I'm, I'm using air quotes when I say play, because as you will see, uh, there isn't much playing that goes on here. But Proteus, it, it, it's another way to describe it is like Minecraft without the mines or the crafting. It's just... You opening your eyes, standing in the water. I guess we're, yeah, we are standing on water. We can't even see our feet, uh-oh. I was going to say I lost the island, but no, it's over here. Um, then you just start walking towards the island. Like, this is it. The keys are W, A, S, and D, and mouse to look, and that's it. You can't run. You can't jump. You're walking on water like, uh, <laughs> like JC, and uh, you get to explore this weird little island. Oh, look at this. Is this like a little... So the only thing to find is like little animals, I believe. Oh, I thought this looked like a lizard or something from far away. I think it's just like moss or something. Or what the hell is that? Oh yeah, it's like a, a couple tufts of grass. So as you can see, it's very pixel arty and it sort of it uses sprite graphics. These aren't actually 3D rendered anything because as I rotate, the sprites continue to face me, which is awesome. Reminds me of playing Doom or Duke Nukem 3D. But oh, look at this. Look at this beautiful tree. It's just like shedding pink it's a pink tree we found it here's a white tree we got green trees and stuff you can hear birds and stuff chirping in the background i told you guys like it's gonna be like taking a walk through nature today um this is the last video that i am making in 2017 and so it felt like a good kind of game to wrap up the year with it's like a nice chill game it's like you know the bare minimum of what constitutes a game it's some code that runs on a computer and does stuff and <laughs> i know when this game came out there's all sorts of controversy people were complaining it wasn't a game um, but the, de the developers stood by it and they said you know what do we really need such strict definitions i think that doesn't really serve anyone like yeah it's a bit of an artistic experience and if you don't like it you don't have to quote unquote play it again play in quotation marks but you know i agree with them not every game has to be the exact same and it's nice sometimes to just get an experience so i i don't mind this um i definitely would recommend look we have chickens and stuff oh those are like some dancing mushrooms that got scared and like ran away from me here watch these chickens are gonna run away hello birdies it's like chasing seagulls on the beach. Look! <laughs> so let's see how far we can chase them. Run for your life. I'm going to come eat you. You better run. I've done terrible things and terrible games. Too many a chicken. Oh, God. We're oh we're in the winter wonderland. Oh, look at that. I thought we were done with winter when I stopped my winter wonderland series. Oh, what is this over here? No, let's explore, guys. That's the whole point. Looks like a castle over there. We got lots to explore here. We're just going to be taking our casual stroll through the world here but yes it gives us a time to relax and so what if there isn't much to do um it is these are like little totems of people or aliens or something hmm um it gives us just something to look at as we sort of reminisce and, and wind down for the year so guys it has been a good year i think i've had a lot of fun over this last year i feel like my channel has really grown um, in ways that uh, I always hoped it would. Oh, is this like a knockdown tree? 
Or is this a castle? You can hear also the music, by the way, is changing as we encounter certain things. So the music is dynamic. Like in the in the same way that like in Dune 2, um, the music was dynamic. So when enemies approached, the music would get far more intense. Was, was this? Oh, look, it's a frog. Oh, we found a frog. So yeah, just like in Dune 2. Oh, look at him jump. The music interacts with what you're doing in the environment. And this, the music will also change based on where you are and what you're doing, which I think is totally cool. That's, that's pretty neat. Um, again, not much to do in this game other than this. Chase a frog to death. <laughs> but we are going to... Damn it, we are going to chase this guy. <laughs> oh, there's two frogs. Oh, my God. This has got to be some kind of achievement in Proteus. We have two frogs. Oh, we got we to gotta herd them. Keep them together. Here we go. You got to get over back where your buddy is, buddy. Oh, no. No. There you go. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Stay together. This is for the good of frog kind. I'm going to make you guys mate somehow. Man, imagine you did that and then just like unlocked level two of Proteus and then it was an RPG. Like nobody had ever found it but me. What, what a what a suit, suit uh, a fitting a fitting way for uh, Proteus to go. I wish that was the case, but I'm sure that uh, these frogs are just eye candy. I think we've lost the other one. There he is. All right, let's leave these frogs be and continue our quest to explore this island. See what other mysteries there be. There's a lot of beautiful trees and, and birds, and oh, look at these big trees. Um, but yes, I feel like my channel has grown, and I've had a lot of fun um, making these videos over the past year. I'm really looking forward to doing it all again next year, guys. Um, this year, what, what were some of the highlights? I guess we can talk about that a little bit as we sort of explore here. So, I mean, definitely, like, what were the highlights for you? Oh, look, it's raining! Woo! We're gonna go get wet in the rain in this awesome pixelated forest. This is so cool. Um, again, not much to do. You know, you take it for what it is. Um, I would definitely recommend if you are going to get this game, you can get it on Steam. Wait for it to go on sale because I think... Oh, is that drinking water? Interesting. When it's not on sale, they want 10 bucks. And, like, I will say, I will admit, as much as I like this as an interesting experience, there's no way this is worth 10 bucks. I would say, uh, wait for it to go on a Steam sale. Get it for, like, a dollar. Uh, then, then I think that's well, well worth the experience that you're getting here. Oh, look, stars are coming out. It's beautiful, guys. We're 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 like in this is like uh, video game heaven. Like all the characters that we played uh, through this past year who died in horrible ways when I was in control. Of them, what was it? Fireflies? They they ended up here. It's sort of like gaming purgatory. Like this is the afterlife for video game characters. Maybe I'm like a dead Super Mario Mario guy. Uh, and I, I like died. Uh, I fell off a cliff or something, and then like the level restarted, and like another Mario got to play that level. But me, I'll forever be in the land of Proteus, looking at the fireflies, just living it out in purgatory. Oh, what's happening to the trees? Oh, is that wind? Oh, it's very neat, very cool. So there's stuff to explore here. Interesting. I've heard the seasons change as well, so maybe we'll try and play this game up to the point where we get to winter, because that would be very suitable for us. Uh, but yes, last year, this last, this past year has been a lot of fun. Um, okay, I tried to jot down some of what I thought were highlights of things that I got to do. Um, I got to, oh god, the wind is like blowing us around here, look at this. Oh, shooting stars, oh my god, oh, and then, oh, whoa, what's happening? What is happening? Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh my god, there's stuff around me. Ah! Oh, I didn't know this was possible, Proteus. Oh my god, am I dead? Am I dead? Did I die? What the hell just happened? Also, I like how if you stare at the sun, like, it like burns your vision out. <laughs> what the hell? I... Whoa, man. Okay, I, I found a warp zone or something. What are these, like, tombstones? Are these, like, is it like Oregon Trail, where, like, every time someone dies in Proteus, you put a tombstone? It's like, here lies fart. Because everyone would name their characters inappropriate, stupid names because you were kids and you played that game. Oh, what are these things, too? Okay, anyway, what were my some, some of my highlights? Um, I got to play Virtual Boy. I got to play a Virtual Boy game, Wario Land, I believe. Um, and uh, that was actually really fun. Uh, I definitely want to try another Virtual Boy game at some point. But what was really cool... Um, what I thought was really cool is I was able to uh, make that video a 3D video. So if you have like a headset, even like Google Cardboard or whatever, you can go and watch that video in 3D. And it actually looks 3D. It's really neat. Virtual Boy, it's, it's sad that they did not develop that system correctly. Because if it had been done correctly, it probably could have been pretty cool. It was sort of like the Oculus Rift before the Oculus Rift. Certainly not as powerful as the Rift, but it could have been neat. But it was, it was just, you know, the Virtual Boy was not really done correctly. 
Um, I finally played Road Rash, which is pretty cool. I heard about that game for years, and and it's you know it's a simple Sega Genesis racer where you beat the crap out of people who oppose you. But um, I think that's what we would all like to do in most racing games. If somebody passes you, you'd like to just pull out a crowbar and like slam them in the face. Um, but um, unfortunately, you can't do that in things like NASCAR. It's just like frowned on, which is kind of dumb. Oh look, we get like okay here. Where do we want to go in the land of Proteus? I think we want to. I'm liking the look of that field. The only thing I wish about this game is the island was bigger, because I feel like I can see the coast over there. Hey, look at what, what the heck is all that? There's like mushroom fields or something. Okay, maybe we'll go there first, and we'll, then we'll wrap around and we'll go through this field over here. Cool. All right, let's. Where were the mushroom fields down here? We. <laughs> oh man, uh, I need to go tobogganing this year. That just makes me want to go tobogganing. Um, road rash. Oh look, these are like reeds. Interesting. All the flowers in this in this land dance. Oh, when you touch them, they make music or something? Huh. Interesting. Um, do you guys remember Donkey Kong Jungle Beats? Oh, no, it was a frog I was chasing. Donkey Kong Jungle Beats, that ridiculous game where you have, like, bongos, and you have to, like, slap the bongos uh, at the right time to make him, like, jump and hop, and then he, like, punches the crap out of another monkey. <laughs> Oh man, what a what a what a ridiculous game that was! But it was it was fun playing around with the the bongos. Like I don't think they're a good controller ultimately, but it was different, and I appreciate that. After playing so many games, I appreciate getting to try something that's a little different. What are, what is this? Weird. It's like a flower in a tree. See that right there? Is this another Proteus achievement? You have unlocked the inner flower. Um, what, were, what were other highlights? I'm just trying to think here. Like, what, what were fun times I can remember? Well, we got to play Sonic 2, Mario 2, Dune 2. A lot of 2s back when I hit my 200s back in the summer. Oh, we got to play Bonk's Adventure on the TurboGrafx-16. That was fun. TurboGrafx-16. What? That is a system that just... Even the name sounds cool. Hey, what are, what's that way out there? Another Proteus achievement. Oh, look. There's, like, Buffalo or something. Oh, my God. Okay, there's stuff to explore here, guys. What are those? It's like sky snakes. It's like Balthazar or whatever from Neverending Story. Come, take me. I want. I. I. I believe the story never ends. I want to sail away on on your back. It's like flies. Ugh. Okay, what are these things? They look like buffalo or something. Or turtles. Or crabs maybe. Huh. They're not scared of me. Okay, I'm gonna feast on them. Nom, 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 nom. All right, I've sustained myself. I can now continue exploring Proteus. So you got to make up your own game mechanics when the developers don't create any. Okay, if I don't find food in five minutes, I'll start to take 10 hit points of damage per turn, and I currently have 100, um, and I need to go fight some frogs. Let's figure out a fighting mechanic for the frogs. If I can make them hop 10 times without encountering another frog, then I've defeated them, and I gain 100 experience points. Oh my god, there's a shack! Oh my god, there's a shack. I was not expecting that. Okay, there's a little more to find than I thought. Can we go in here? Okay, no. Okay, this is the tavern. Okay, I'm now buying a sword and shield and conversing with an NPC who's sending me on a quest to find three different colored frogs and then return to the shack before winter. So there's my quest, guys. All right. So we're... Let's... Oh, I'm already disoriented. I think... Oh, look! Here's uh, that, that sky snake. Just snaking around through the trees. Oh, look at this. Oh, this is a, a good candidate spot for frogs, but I do not see any. Nom, 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 nom. I already munched on those guys. Our stamina is... Oh, there's a frog. Oh, two. Two different colored frogs. Okay, we just need to find a third colored frog, and we're good. Let's chase these turkeys out into the water. Oh, that frog just committed suicide. He jumped in the water, and frogs cannot swim, as, as I understand it. So maybe let's hug the coast for a little bit. We haven't done that yet. Oh, look at this. It's like a nebula or something. What planet are we on? How do we send a message to Kirk and Picard to come save us? So you got to make up your own backstory in a game like Proteus, guys. Um, what were other highlights? Mario 2, Sonic 2 was fun. TurboGrafx-16, oh yes. TurboGrafx-16 is one of those systems that, like, I think is really neat. I just never owned one as a kid, but there's definitely, like, retro games on that system that I've always wanted to try, never got around to trying. So we got to play Bonk's Adventure. Um, I do have Bonk's Revenge earmarked as a game that I will return to at some point. And by all means, if there are other great TurboGrafx-16 games, TurboGrafx-16 games that you guys know of that you could recommend to me, please let me know because um, one thing I've realized I really enjoy about you know since I've been 
making videos is I really like trying games on different systems that I don't really know. So like I'm looking for it. I want to try like a 3DO game in the coming year and uh, and and maybe a CDI game at some point. Like there's all sorts of oh the trees are dancing again. Oh no, they're going to summon me to some other place. Exactly what happened last time. So uh, yeah, different systems would be cool. Um, other highlights. Oh, Battletech, Revenge of the Crescent Hawks. That was a game that I personally loved, spent a lot of time playing as a kid, and was really excited to, to make a Let's Play series for. It was a, a game that literally was on my list since I first started. Oh, we found a third frog. We win. Da -da 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 We've leveled up. We are now level twos. As level twos, we need to chase some birds around. We need to find a new species of animal that we have not seen before. That's what we have to do. I'm willing to believe there's at least one more type of animal we haven't seen yet. So, oh, what the hell is that thing? Oh, we just... Okay, I'm willing to take that as a new species of animal. It could also be a scarf caught in the wind. Uh, I think I've lost. It could also be a ghost. We're going to take it, though. We've leveled up to level three in Proteus. You guys excited for this? I didn't think I'd hit level three, but it's pretty exciting. Now we have to find a new kind of tree, I think. Or we, we have to find something we haven't seen before. I think, I think that's how you level up in Proteus. What is this? What the heck? That was a, a ghost frog. Did you see that? He just... He jumped into another realm of existence. He went this way. Is he gone? What the heck? He's a ghost frog, man. Look how high he jumps. Holy crap. That Okay, we found a magic frog. We just leveled up again. And we lost the magic frog in the process. Crap, where was he? There he is. Let's continue chasing him. All right, man, we are leveling up like, like mofos here. It's crazy. Um, but yes, Battletech... Crescent Hawks Revenge was a game I always knew I wanted to make a Let's Play of because one of my favorite games, and there really wasn't a great Let's Play of it on YouTube. I think there was uh, one fella, he started to do it, but I don't think anyone ever finished it on YouTube. So it seemed like a gap where I could actually make a difference. In a lot of the games that I try out on my channel, people, other people have played them all the way through. So for us, it's fun to kind of sample them like a beer taster, like try all these different games. But if you want to see like somebody be really good at a game and beat it, um, I, you know, I can admit that I'm probably not your first source. I'm more, I'm more here as a sampler of tastes, guys. We, hey, I think we made him jump into that tree. Oh no, if we could get him to jump into that, that would be awesome. Let's see if we can do that. We're gonna make our own challenges here in Proteus, guys. So yes, I, I knew I wanted to do the Battletech thing, but I also knew that I didn't want to like rush it because I wanted to wait until I thought I could do a good job of it. So I definitely knew I was going to wait until I had more experience making videos. So I'm really glad that I waited. I'm really glad it worked out. It's one of my most watched uh, like mini series uh, and even most watched videos on my channel. So it's like I feel like success all the way around. Um, speaking of which, I never thought my... Uh, you know, like, like I had I had hopes that my channel would catch on, but I also, when I first started making my channel a couple of years ago, I do definitely still remember. It, like, scarred me because it, like, burned into my brain. I remember for, like, 90 days at one point, my channel only had 27 viewers. <laughs> 27. And at one point, I thought, you know what? Maybe this is it. I, it had a good run. It grew a little bit. It got to 27. If it's going to be 27, I'm still going to do this. I'm still going to do this crazy thing that I've embarked on. And I'm just going to make, you know, be... Oh, look, we found four frogs all at once. We've leveled up. We're now level fives, I think. Fours or five. We're going to take level five. If we... Okay, we're... Oh, look, another frog. Okay, now we're definitely level five. There we go. All right, see, we're we're... We're good at this game, man. <laughs> this game has no mechanics. What are you talking about? There's mechanics all over the place. Look, we have to eat some reeds. Nom, 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 so we can keep going. We now power ourselves off reeds. The, the crabs no longer do it. We can find a chicken. If we can catch and eat a chicken, we will level up four levels, I think. But that's, that's a tall order. I don't know how you do that. It might be nearly impossible. Let's get up here and see which direction we want to go to explore a little island. Oh, look. Oh, that is... Oh, it's a bird. Okay. Oh, it might be like an owl. Oh, so it wasn't just a scarf in the wind. Oh, look at this thing. He's hiding in the tree. Hello, Mr. Owl. You are wise, just like me. 
What happens to you in the daytime? Do you like just evaporate? Let's watch. The sun is setting. Oh, there's like a bat over there. I'm not gonna level up for that because the it's just a bat. Look, this owl's. We're having a stare off. Let's see how long we can stare at this guy. I want to see what happens when the sun sets. So we're not gonna move. Oh, he's running away. You get back here, owl. You get back here. Is he just gone? Is he gone? Oh, so they just disappeared during the day. That's a little disappointing. Hey, look at these. I haven't seen those before. We're not going to level up for such little things. We need something more substantial now. We're high-level characters, guys. Those little things aren't worth a lot of experience. Um, but yeah, I guess, you know, at one point I just thought my channel would be small. And, uh, hey, I I'm not making any claims that it is huge These by, by you know, the, the absolute standards. But I am I'm excited by how much it has grown. And... Each and every one of you guys who tunes in for my videos, even if you don't watch every one, you watch every other one or something like that, I am just ecstatic that I have found you and that I entertain you and that you guys are enjoying the series because, you know, I'd be doing this even if nobody watched, but it's so much more fun to have you guys tune in and for have, to have you guys leave your own little comments, your own little memories and stuff when I play a game. So yes, um, honestly, like, thank you guys for, for tuning in. Uh, for checking it out, and I'm so glad that uh, that we found each other. Oh, we're having we're having a little moment here. Oh, look at this! We found like a warp zone again. Let's do it! Take me away! Take me to the afterlife! I'm ready! I'm ready! Oh, look! Time passes crazily. So there are warp zones here. Hey, we're in fall! Oh, I guess it warps you to different seasons. Interesting. All right, we're in fall. It's rainy. It's cold. The trees are losing their leaves. I definitely want to see winter. We can't quit this game until we see winter. So we have to continue to reminisce. Oh, it's like foggy and stuff too. So, okay, we were talking about highlights. Highlights, Crescent Hawks. Ooh, how about Sim City on the Mac? That was, that was a fun experience. Speaking of trying different systems, well, first of all, getting... So, uh, I play that game actually on a Mac emulator because I didn't have like a really, really old school Mac. And um, I have found, like, in the past when I've had to rely on an emulator for, for something, that most of the time modern emulators are pretty easy to get working on... Uh, what are these things? On modern computers? Oh, these... Whoa, weird. Weird. Um, but the Mac emulator? My god, that thing is a freaking nightmare. Macs are so oddly designed. It's, it's perplexing. Like, not only are Macs like traditionally incompatible with all sorts of stuff but like they just have like their own design philosophies that just make them so difficult to work with um, and it even showed up in trying to emulate that so like literally it took me a couple of weeks to get a mac emulator working to the point where i could actually play sim city so talk about difficult but once it got working oh my god it was worth it was worth the effort i believe i firmly believe what is this are you a new kind of animal? What are you? Oh, you're just you're just a couple of animals we've seen just glued together. That's less interesting. Look at all the it's like lovely foliage. We've got the fall colors going on here, guys. You could just play this game year round, I suppose, and get a constant treat of the different seasons. Look at just the leaves are just falling. Just stand here and watch the leaves fall. Yeah, so SimCity on the Mac, that definitely took me back to my computer lab youth. You know, when I was a kid in like grade seven and eight, it's like all you wanted was a teacher to tell you you could go to the computer lab to work on stuff. Cause you'd, you'd work, you'd like, you'd like rush through uh, typing up whatever little assignment you had to type up. And then you would go, you'd click right on like Sim City or Sim Earth. We also had Sim Ant. Um, and of course, Oregon Trail, like all those, all those games, like, you know, it's, it, as soon as computers got into the, the classroom, it was like, it was only a matter of time before they became riddled with games and became productivity destroyers. But yes, at least we could kind of claim that SimCity was uh, educational. It's teaching us about civics, Teach. You know, I'm, I'm learning. I'm learning about the economy. Uh, just, you know, like, yeah, there's a monster attacking my city right now, but, uh, you know, that's a metaphor for economic depression. So, you know, I'm just going to keep playing SimCity here and not do my schoolwork. Um, that was the logic I tried. It, it did not always work, but it's the logic I tried. Hey, you can't actually collide with stuff, by the way. Look. Oh, my God. Proteus has collision detection. That was one feature. They were like, yo, we're cutting everything, 
but we we have like state-of-the-art collision detection um, with our beautiful pixel art graphics some people would look at this and say the graphics suck but like honestly i i'm a suck you know as a retro gamer coming out of an era when all my games look like this i will forever be enchanted by pixel graphics um, and I think, you know, I think that's something that, like, modern developers don't really appreciate. Like, you know, there's all this fuss about, you know, we make AAA games. We have to have it, like, photorealistic, pushed past the uncanny valley. Like, you can't tell the difference between a, a movie and my game. Blah, blah, blah. They spend billions of dollars producing these games now. And most of it's going towards graphics and sound and all this. You know what? If you took Proteus and you added in some really tight shooting mechanics, this could be like an amazing game in my perspective. Like I've said this before, I'm a fan of Brutal Doom. I think Brutal Doom, it takes Doom, it adds all these modern mechanics into it, like headshots, aiming down sights, blowing off body parts and stuff, and it actually turns it into almost as good, if not a better shooter than some of the like AAA shooters that come out. So it's like, I, I think AAA games have it wrong sometimes, where they think that everything has to look amazing. Because I think games, you know, they're not called looks, they're called games. You need to have the game play in it. You don't need to have... Visuals are nice, but they're, aside, they're an aside. You know, cool visuals in a video game once in a while that blow you away are really neat. But at the end of the day, if the gameplay sucks, the game sucks. And so I firmly believe that developers wouldn't have to resort to this triple a to this loot box stuff of where they have to like trick you into spending more money and have in-game uh you know uh, microtransactions and stuff if all they would do is say you know what we're slashing our budget for graphics and sound we're gonna have like decent graphics decent sound but we're not gonna invest heavily in it and what we're gonna do is we're gonna like pimp that gameplay to the extreme and get it so tight and so fun um and it's going to cost a hell of a lot less. You're not going to have to include microtransactions and you're going to end up with a game that people just adore uh, and love. Uh, and then you can spend some time creating like, oh, we got snow. We got snow here. Let's let's uh, enjoy the snow for a little bit because it's winter. Um, I'm kind of ranting about about video game development, but yeah, like I, I firmly believe you don't need to have the best graphics. Like maybe that's just me. Maybe you guys are listening to this being like, Jay, you don't know what you're talking about, man. Like if it doesn't look good, no one's going to want to play it. I, fr I actually also believe that... Oh, whoa! Oh my god, we're in hell now. What the heck is happening? Oh, Proteus is approaching us. Oh, look, we're leaving dust clouds. We're leaving dust clouds. What the heck? Oh my god, what the hell just happened? Oh, look, there's a warp zone forming over there. Okay. Yes, Satan. I will enter your warp field. Show me the way. I will destroy those who need to be destroyed. I will kill my enemies and drink their blood. All right, show me the way, show me the way, Satan. <laughs> okay, here, it's gonna happen, guys. It's gonna happen. <laughs> Whoa, what the heck? We've, we've traveled 10,000 years into the future when the island has rotted away. And there is nothing left of the land of Proteus. It is a dark land ruled by the Zelgots, who live above land and feed on the Shimu, who toil in the mines. It's the post-apocalyptic level of Proteus, guys. Shoot, we did not level. We're not high enough level to be in here. This is endgame content. What the f are we doing here? We're totally. We're we're screwed, man. This is the winter level, of course. You can see snow everywhere. But, like, there's no way we're going to survive this. One Zelgot's going to ruin us. Oh, my God. How did we... <laughs> how did we end up here? Um, okay, one last thing about the AAA developers, by the way. Before, and, and I'll move on. I'll give it up. I'll stop ranting and complaining. But uh, I, I do actually believe that the fascination with graphics, the reason so many games emphasize graphics over gameplay, is that if you want to show someone, oh, we're above the clouds. Oh! Oh, we're in heaven we made it to video game heaven <laughs> literally video game heaven oh cool uh, but the reason games emphasize graphics over gameplay is if you want to show someone a game show them a screenshot all they can see is the graphics 
So I think it's evolved over time where people are super fascinated with graphics of the video games because that's what people see. You can't take a screenshot and see gameplay. Um, and as a result, there's been this sort of false belief that games have to continue to get better and better looking. But I believe they need to get more and more fun. You know, the, the gameplay needs to improve. And so, yeah, anyway, that's my two cents. Um, let's, let's stop complaining, though, and continue to reminisce. What else did we get to try this year? Uh, as we as we toil underneath the clouds, this is pretty cool, man. The neat mechanics of like you can go under the clouds or above them. I'm so hyped that we made it to the winter level. Yes, this is probably what it looks like out most of your windows right now. Here, as you enjoy winter, I hope there's snow. Do you guys like snow or hate it? Um, I kind of like it because I like to build like snowmen and and go tobogganing and and build snow forts. All in theory, I feel like I never actually do any of this. But like in my head, I'm like, yeah, those things are fun things. I wish I could do them. I should do them, and I just never do them. Um, one day I'll have an excuse. One day there'll be like a young Jay, and he will want to build snow forts, and he'll be like, let's do it, boy. And we'll go outside with shovels and like build the most awesome fort the world has ever seen. It'll be called that. Will be the new Jaytopia when there's young Jay and old Jay working together. Um, but, uh, yeah, okay, reminiscing, reminiscing, oh, Ultima Online, that was kind of fun, Ultima Online was neat, it was a game that sort of passed its prime for sure, but it's really cool that servers are still running, man, I couldn't believe it, I thought for sure they would be out of business, I would have to go, like, find some stock footage, ask the person who it belongs to if I could use their footage and talk over it and stuff, so I'm psyched I got to actually try that game, it was... It was complicated, and I feel like, you know, I didn't really get much done in the game. But games like that are, uh, you know, they're they're just, they're complicated. And um, in the spirit of this sort of series, I didn't have like 32 hours to devote to it. Oh my god, it's snowing. The most magical time of the year is here. Oh my god, this should have been in my Winter Wonderlands uh, series. Part of Proteus. Actually, it wouldn't have worked because for my Winter Wonderland series, I was trying to include games that were completely set place in winter, not just partially in winter. I didn't just want one level that took place in winter. They had to all be winter. Here we go. The most festive, a very seasonably appropriate uh, tableau for you guys as we continue to reminisce here. Um, ooh, Star Fox 2 was pretty cool too, by the way. I don't know if you guys enjoyed that one or not. I really... Um, I, I So I simultaneously enjoyed it and was slightly disappointed in the sense of I feel like Star Fox 2... Um, was not as good as Star Fox 1. The levels were shorter. It was cool to be able to, like, explore in any direction that you wanted and stuff, but the levels, like, there weren't very many levels on the surface of a planet that had you, like, fight through, like, a really complicated level, like in Star Fox 1. And you often went into these bases that were mazes, but, like, they all had the exact same boss. There was less variety in bosses and stuff, so... Um, I ultimately, like, if, you know, if I'm gonna go back and play Star Fox, I would definitely play Star Fox 1 over 2. Um, Star Fox 2 is a little different, though, as a game. It's meant to be played over and over again with harder difficulties, and you sort of have to come up with different mechanics, because it's sort of like it had the overworld level. Star Fox 1, it was just a map, and Star Fox 2, like, there was a game of chess essentially happening. Um, and you would have to sort of plan where you were going to move your ships and, like, manage resources and stuff. So, I mean, that was neat. Um, I just felt like the actual levels... Um, once you got into playing the levels, they weren't as good as Star Fox 1. So that's just my opinion. But it was super cool to be able to finally play it officially after all these years. I had never tried any of the like unofficial releases, so I had never tried Star Fox 2 before. And, of course, it was on the Super Nintendo Mini, which itself was kind of a highlight of this past year. Um, you know, of course, Nintendo had supply issues, and there was all this controversy and stuff about pre-orders, and you know. But if you get past that, the Super Nintendo Mini is a really cool idea for a system, um, and I was lucky enough to be able to get one, which I am really, really grateful for. And hey, look! Well, we have to go over there. We totally have to make it over there to that mountain. That's so cool. Oh, I love being above the clouds. That's this is really neat. I mean, Proteus again, no big gameplay mechanics. Some neat features. Um, oh, and I love... Oh, this is perfect. Look, oh, it's winter. Winter is in my computer, guys. Awesome. Oh, just... Feels like Christmas all over again, guys. Can we just take a moment here and enjoy this? The, you know, in Proteus, we're in no rush to get to that other mountain. Let's just enjoy it. But, uh, yeah, I do hope that they make an N64 Mini, which it looks like they're probably going to. Uh, one of the main reasons I, I hope they do is because 
Um, I have an N64 and I have some controllers, but like the analog sticks are starting to go. And I've said before, the, the N64 has kind of a wonky controller because it was the first analog stick one. And so a lot of people don't have experience with it and playing with the N64 controller feels weird to them. So it'd be cool to introduce the controller to a whole new generation so they could at least try it and maybe get accustomed to it. And maybe people like me who never really had one growing up could kind of get over their initial feeling of uncomfortability and start to enjoy some of the more classic games. But also, I'm sure if they re-released it, the analog sticks on the new controllers would be far more durable than the classics. Because one of the things with the N64 is that its analog sticks go with time. They wear out. And so if you have one that, that's quite old, it might just it might just be, you know, the whole the stick is just broken at this point. And it's almost impossible to use. So I think in the case of preserving N64 games you know, properly, we need new durable controllers. So I hope Nintendo makes uh, an N64 Mini for that reason alone, almost. Um, speaking of controllers, remember we got to try Steel Battalion? That was also an awesome... That was one of another highlight of mine for this, this past year, uh, getting to play Steel Battalion. That was the game that had four, a 40-button, three-pedal, two-joystick controller that cost, like, over $100. Um, I... I always had that one on my radar as well, and I always knew I wanted to play it. I did not know how I was going to make it happen. I thought at one point maybe I would just, you know, try and find someone who owned the controller and stuff. But then when I looked into it, I realized it wasn't that hard to get. And yeah, it's a hundred bucks, and that was a bit of a commitment for me to actually decide. Okay, I'm going to spend the money. What? Am I floating? Oh my! What? I'm on a tree. Produce achievement unlocked. Blah, 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 I've leveled up again. Level 10. I am on a tree, guys. I didn't even know you could do this. Whoa. Oh, I'm flying. I've unlocked the power of flight. What the heck? I'm... Oh, my God. I've ascended. I am a more powerful being than... I don't even know how to go down, by the way. <laughs> Is this a bug? Is this supposed to happen? Oh my god. Imagine this happened in real life. One day you just like had the power to fly. I've had dreams like this. What the heck? I'm like in the clouds. So if you play this game long enough, you become Superman. You become a god. A god of men. I guess if you lived long enough, maybe the same thing would happen. But nobody's lived long enough yet. I can just like ascend the heavens. My god, I, I truly am in purgatory. I am in gaming purgatory, where every character I've ever played this whole year, every time he's died, he's ended up here. His own personal Proteus. Um, but yeah, Steel Battalion, glad I got to play it. Glad I figured out to get the controller. It wasn't actually that difficult or expensive to get, get the controller when I looked into it. It was a bit of a commitment, the $100, but you know what? I figured, what the heck? Let's just do it. I conti I'm continuing to fly higher and higher, and I don't know how to stop. So this, this might be a sign that our time with Proteus is slowly wrapping up. Eventually, if you play this game long enough, they're like, All right, buddy, let's, let's, come on. Let's just quit the game already. Time to quit. They just, like, make you fly off into heaven. Um, I guess we were playing long enough that they were like, Come on, man, just get in this portal. Let's go to winter already. Um, is this part of the game? I don't understand. Am I su Is this supposed to be happening? I'm so confused. I need to look up a Proteus tutorial. The tutorial will just say, press W to walk forward. That's literally it. Oh, stars again, shooting stars. All right, well, let's continue to kind of sail around. I guess we're going to aim for second star on the right and straight till morning. We'll end up in Neverland. Huh, interesting. So I guess you only get so much time in heaven before the before heaven's like, get the hell out of here. You've overstayed your welcome. Whoa. All right. Well, uh... Any other highlights that I can think of since my year is ending, apparently. my it's Proteus is ending my video for me. Uh, Wolfenstein 3D, I guess, is the last one I can think of off the top of my head. Uh, that was, that was of course, just a classic, and uh, it was fun to go back and play. Especially with all the, like, Wolfenstein controversy that was happening this year. It's very weird. Um, very weird, uh that people are like all of a sudden like defending Nazis and so it is it's a crazy time we lived in. I mean besides my channel 2017 has had its own highlights. Oh my god, I totally am ascending. I'm coming. Let's do this. Oh my god, I reached the end of Proteus. I didn't even know there was an end. What the hell? What happens now? Oh. Huh. That is Completely unexpected. I thought we'd just get to walk around in Proteus until forever. 
But I guess you legitimately end the game at some point. Okay, guys, well, I mean, this is a good point to wrap up anyway. Uh, Proteus here. Very fascinating game. And, um, you know, you've seen it, so you've seen Proteus beginning to end now. But anyway, I've been talking this whole video about my highlights for the year. What have your highlights been? What have maybe both some games or videos you've enjoyed checking out on my channel? Or, like, do you have your own highlights? Were there games that you got to play or, like, systems that you got? Or did you just have highlights generally? Not game-related, just highlights in your life. No matter what it is, let me know, guys. I love hearing from you, and I hope, I sincerely hope you all had a great 2017, despite the fact that there were some crazy things that happened in the world. Um, I think there were also some good things that happened, too. So we got to kind of stay positive, and uh, I sincerely hope everyone, their personal 2017s were great. Um, do you guys have any New Year's resolutions that are coming up for you? Uh, I mean, New Year's is coming up. This is the last time I'll see you in 2017. I personally don't really do New Year's resolutions. Though I guess if I were pressed to make some, maybe I would say I'd uh, read more instruction manuals before I play, before I make videos. You know, maybe that's like one thing I could try and do. Or like, um, also, you know, actually a resolution maybe that I wouldn't mind trying is, is streaming on Twitch a couple times this coming year. Um, I have streamed before. I'm not the greatest streamer just because I kind of prefer the, the you know, being able to record stuff and then, uh, you know, just sort of edit it together and, and put it out. Even though my videos don't have a lot of edits, I just feel less pressure when I'm not doing it live. But, uh, but hey, I, I think I would try, I might try and give uh, streaming another shot this year, especially maybe trying on Twitch, see if we can uh, find some uh, other folks who've never heard of me uh, to get them interested in the series too, to watch them along with you guys. But anyway, I'm just sort of blathering on right now. Um, guys, I hope you've had a terrific 2017. I hope you have enjoyed checking out Proteus with me today. If you have, remember to like the video, remember to subscribe to the channel, remember to tell all your friends and family about me, and you guys all have a terrific New Year's. I will see you guys in 2018. Until then, guys. Peace. Wonder what it tells you in the help section. Move with W, A, S, and D. Toggles, walk forward. What, you can sit? You can sit? I, I, I didn't know you could sit. F9 to save a postcard, oh my god. We have to try the sit mechanic. I mean, I can't leave a one huge mechanic untested. All right, I feel like this is a good place to sit. All right, here we go, guys. You ready? Sit. Oh, it's not stopping. I can't stop leveling up. Oh!